Welcome to Whiteboard Wednesday. On today's episode, I'm sharing with you guys five open water swimming tips. If you're a beginner swimmer, I'll share a few different reasons why you wanna consider the open water. And of course, if you're a beginner or advanced swimmer, five different tips that you can make your open water swim as efficient and enjoyable as possible. If you're new to the channel, welcome to my swim pro where we share the latest and greatest to help you improve your performance and health both in and out of the water. If you're new to the channel, make sure you're subscribed, like this video, and let me know in the comments what your favorite part about open water swimming is. Or if you're a beginner swimmer, let us know in the comments what questions you have, and hopefully we can answer them by the end of this video. Now, the first thing you might be considering is why would I go for an open water swim in the first place? There's a few different reasons. I'm gonna outline six of them right here. The first could be that you're bored and tired of swimming in a chlorinated pool. Maybe you hate the smell of chlorine. You get tired of looking at that black line going back and forth in a 25 meter, 25 yard or 50 meter pool. And you've just had enough and you wanna mix things up. Open water can be a great alternative. Perhaps you don't have access to a pool. Maybe you're quarantined somewhere, you're traveling. You just don't have access for a number of different reasons. And the open water is the only thing that you can get into. So it's fun to go for a dip. No pool, no excuses. The third reason could be that you just wanna be one with nature. It's so enjoyable to go out in the open water and you're in a different element. You're really connecting with the water in a new and creative way. And that's something that makes open water swimming really unique and fun. Perhaps you wanna expand your social circle. This is a great reason to try open water swimming because there's definitely a different community. There's some overlap, pool and open water swimming. But there's definitely a group of people who love open water swimming and they'll never go swimming in a pool. And that community is something really fun to be a part of. Maybe you wanna get that sense of achievement and accomplishment. I mean, how cool is it to look out in the water and to say that you swam to a buoy and back? Or maybe you swam a certain distance open water. You swim from one point to another or across a lake or across a channel with safety, of course. There's a number of different things that make you feel prideful and you like you accomplish something that you really can't get in the pool like you can in open water. And the last reason I want you to consider open water swimming is because it's downright fun. It's a different experience, really thinking about that element of nature and really being able to connect with the water in a new and creative way. Definitely going for an open water swim is fun. Not that swimming in a pool is not fun, but it's definitely fun in its own right. Now, what equipment might you wanna have? There's a lot of different equipment that you may or may not need, depending on who you are and what your skill level is and how serious you wanna take it. There's, of course, some basics that you have to have. You have to have some kind of a swimsuit. You gotta cover yourself up, depending on where you live. You might get away with something else. You gotta have some goggles, swim cap, safety buoy. If you're not used to wearing a swim cap for my guys out there in a pool, in open water, it's a really important thing to have a swim cap because it makes you visible to other people. If it's really choppy and you don't have a swim cap on and you have dark hair like I do, or even blonde hair, it doesn't really matter. It's really hard to see you. So for watercraft, marine life, whatever, you need to make sure that you're present and visible. So having a swim cap is a must. And I also recommend, highly recommend a safety buoy. This is one of those things that you can attach with a buckle around your waist. It inflates with air and you can even put your stuff in there, whether it's your phone, wallet or anything. You don't have to leave on the beach if you don't want to leave it on the shore. And again, this is all about visibility. Of course, you can hang on it and it's going to keep you from, you know, potentially needing it, uh, a life, life preserve. But it's definitely something I highly recommend. There are definitely some optional pieces of equipment. It really depends on where you are, where you're at. But definitely having a wetsuit is super beneficial if you're trying to go for a longer swim, if the water is really cold. It's not required, but it's definitely super helpful if the water is chilly. Uh, you might have energy gels. Again, if you're swimming with an open water buoy, you can attach these to it. You can stick the energy gels inside. If you're going for a longer swim, something to consider, even an energy drink, not an energy drink, like a sports drink or something to keep yourself hydrated. You might want earplugs. Uh, if, even if you're not used to using those in the pool, it might be a good consideration to have in the open water if it's really cold and that's a great way to keep yourself warm maybe swim gloves or a skull cap something to keep your body a little bit more insulated you can get some things that cover your hands or your feet or your head in addition to the swim cap that you're actually going to wear those a lot of them have to do with temperature they're optional not required now let's get into these five tips now these are five broken out in a number of different things sort of in order that you need to follow the first is to survey the environment and this is really if you're a beginner swimmer this is something you have to before you get started you got to figure out think safety first where are you actually going to swim you know is it are you swimming in the lake the ocean what does it look like is you know how deep is the water what is the water depth is there marine life or is there a restricted area you're not allowed to swim in certain areas are there sharks right are there turtles alligators whatever make sure it's safe where you're going to swim what is the watercraft situation are there jet skis boats is there a shipping channel does it matter what time of day you're allowed to swim so make sure you follow the regulations and of course think safety first if you join my sailboat make sure you give the video a big like thank you very much 
Step number two and tip number two is to have a game plan. It, it, the worst thing you can do is say, I'm going to swim from here to the other side of the lake. Good luck. We'll see you later. Bye. That's the worst thing you can do. It's really important to figure out your plan, figure out where you're going to swim, the route. Ideally, you're swimming with someone else. Step number three, tip number three, and set a smart goal for yourself. There's three layers to this. So you can go by time. You can say, I'm going to swim for 30 minutes. Maybe you have two buoys and you're going to swim from one buoy to another buoy and you're just gonna go for 30 minutes. And you got a smartwatch, you just have a mental awareness of the time somehow. Or you can go by distance. You know that you wanna swim one mile, one kilometer, two kilometers, five kilometers. You have a plan marked out, you know a map, you know you're gonna swim, and you have it mapped out. That's the second best way. And the reason why I say time is really the best because you know, given the current and other variables, it might be really difficult to really understand how far you're going and how long it's gonna take you, but time is actually the, the least risky way if you've got a watch to know how long you should be spending in the water. If you're used to only swimming for 30 minutes, it doesn't make sense to try and swim across a lake that's five miles. You're just not gonna make it. You're asking for a disaster to happen. And then the third and potentially worst way is by feel. I'm just gonna swim until I get tired and I'm gonna get out. You can certainly do that. I don't recommend it. I recommend going by time or distance or some combination of the two and figure out your game plan before you get into the water. And alongside that, have a swim buddy. Make sure you swim in a pack. It helps for visibility, helps for mental motivation, and of course, it makes it more fun. It could be a swim buddy. You could have someone following you on a kayak like a spotter. They could carry your gear as well, whether if they're in a kayak or maybe even a stand-up paddleboard. Maybe they're in a small watercraft of some kind. It's really important to have a swim buddy, and it doesn't have to be a swim buddy. It could be just a, a companion, a partner that goes out in the open water with you, makes it more enjoyable, makes it more, more safe. Uh, the fourth tip is to use the right gear. Now we talked about the gear a little bit right here. We talked about what swim equipment is required to go for an open water swim and what equipment is optional. Again, let us know in the comments if you want more specificity of if you need certain gear for certain environments, but it's really important to have the right stuff and make sure you plan it out before. If you know you're gonna go for a longer swim, make sure you get your energy gels. If you know the water is gonna be 45 degrees Fahrenheit, I don't recommend swimming in that kind of temperature, but you know the water is gonna be under 60 degrees, you need to have a wetsuit. It's just not smart to go in there in a brief and hope for the best. So figure out your equipment game plan before and keep it simple. There's a lot of different equipment out there. Let us know if you want recommendations on what you should be getting, but don't overcomplicate it. Keep it simple, especially if you're getting started. And even for the advanced swimmers, there's no reason to overindulge and just spend a ton of money buying all this stuff that's really just gonna overcomplicate it. Remember, swimming is so beautiful because it's just you and the water. You need to have a swimsuit between you and the water. But other than that, it's pretty much, you don't really need anything. Of course, you wanna have goggles and a swim cap if you're going for open water and you wanna get in a real swim workout. But other than that, you don't really need a lot. So keep it simple and then add in the gear as appropriate. And the fifth tip is to do a dynamic warm up before you actually get in the water. This is probably the most training specific goal here. Notice how we talked about four different tips before even getting into the water, all about preparation so you can enjoy the open water swim. And the fifth tip here is the dynamic warm up. So it's really important to elevate your heart rate because when you get in the water in a pool, it's a lot easier to warm yourself up. You can just do one length, 25 meters, 50 meters, 100 meters, and then boom, you can take a break, you can stop, you can stand, grab onto the wall. You can't really do that necessarily in open water. And of course, you wanna measure the depth, you wanna know how deep it is, and you wanna know what you're getting yourself into. And most of the time, you're not gonna be able to stop. You're gonna to have to tread water, float on your back if you need to take a break. So because of that, there isn't really an easy way to warm yourself up in the open water, unless you're a more experienced swimmer, there are some things you can do. So it's important to elevate your heart rate and increase the blood flow in your entire body. So dynamic stretching is before the workout. That's like okay. moving your arms, ham, dynamic hamstring stretch, jumping up and down, you know, shaking out your muscles, getting the blood activated. Because remember, you're not gonna be moving your arms until you get in the water and it's not gonna stop unless you float on your back or do some kind of elementary backstroke. So really important to do dynamic warm up before you even get in the water. If you're looking for dynamic stretches and dryland training programs, make sure you check out the My Swim Pro app. We've got swim training programs and dryland training programs. Let's talk about a few different bonus tips. So I've got four right here. The first one is probably the most important for a beginner or an advanced swimmer who's coming from a swimming pool training competition or just fitness background. And it's don't worry about the distance or pace that you go compared to a pool. In a pool, you might have a routine. You go 2,000 meters, you go 5,000 meters three times a week. Whatever your routine is, you kind of throw that out the window. It's not really that relevant when you go to the open water. It's not, it's apples and oranges. Apples and oranges. 
They don't really compare because they're so different for a number of factors. There's current, there's waves, there's chop, there's fatigue, there's no push off the wall, there's sun, there's temperature. There's so many different things you don't have to worry about in the pool. So it's really important not to get yourself in the mental and, and blind yourself to the fact that this is a different environment. It's almost like a different sport entirely. And you need to treat it as such along with your assumptions. So set those smart goals. Don't, especially if you're getting started, don't worry about how fast you're swimming. Don't worry if you, oh, I have to swim 2000 meters because I'm used to swimming 2000 meters. And don't do this, this is the worst thing. Don't try and equate, well, from buoy A to buoy B is 50 meters. So I'm gonna run 15 50s on some interval. You can do that if you become a more advanced swimmer and you're used to running training and you're used to open water. But if you're just getting started, don't try and run a pool workout in the open water. It's just not gonna be the same. There are certain things you can apply from the pool to open water. Just go in the water with an open mind and really enjoy it. I also recommend mixing up the strokes. You don't have to only do freestyle, backstroke and breaststroke. Make sure you're safe if you're doing backstroke. Understand where the buoys are potentially or other watercraft. It's not like a pool in that regard. And make sure you're, you're just enjoying yourself. Float on your back. If you get tired, the easiest thing you can do is to roll onto your back and do elementary backstroke. Or just float on your back. If you have a wetsuit, you're gonna float by default. It's gonna be pretty easy. So make sure you float, kick your legs a little bit, do a flutter kick, really enjoy the water, and make sure you're not over fatiguing yourself. Mix up the strokes. The third is to practice open water sighting and different open water skills. Now, if you are swimming between buoys and you're swimming in a relatively flat environment, open water sighting is actually kind of easy. The way it works is you're gonna lift your head up so your eyes are just above the surface of the water and you can make a good observation of what's in front of you and make sure you can just orient yourself to make sure you're going in a straight line or wherever it is that you're trying to go. Practice these skills. It's really difficult to do this in a pool effectively. You can do it in a pool, you can set up cones and you can practice open water sighting. But if you are training for an open water race or a triathlon, this is your chance, don't blow it. Make sure you're practicing the skills and if you're interested in more open water techniques, Make sure you check out the links in the description below. We'll make sure we provide the best open water training content for all of our subscribers. And the fourth is to learn to relax in cold water. Maybe you should have put this one first. If you're a beginner swimmer, this might be the most intimidating thing. Going into water, you can't see the bottom, you can't stand, the water is freezing. Am I supposed to just start swimming? It's okay, take a deep breath and learn to relax. Because the worst thing you wanna do is kinda just get anxiety and tense up and everything. That's why it's really important to have that dynamic warm up before you get in the water. So that way you've already elevated your heart rate, you're ready to go and then bring your heart rate down. Then whether you dive in or just walk into the water, depending on your environment, if the water is cold, your body's already been acclimated to physical work. So you're not going just wake up in the morning from bed and then you hop in a freezing lake and then you start swimming. You break yourself in. That's why dynamic warm up is super important. It's also really important to learn to relax in that cold water. So focus on your breathing, in your nose, out your mouth, because it can be a big waste of energy and it can actually be a safety risk if you panic just because the water is a little bit colder than you're used to in the pool. Another reason why it's important to have a wetsuit, but even without a wetsuit, it's important to learn this skill so that way you're safe in the open water. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on different open water swimming tips, whether you're a beginner swimmer or advanced swimmer, if you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a big like. Also subscribe to My Swim Pro on all social media. And if you're looking for training programs both in and out of the water, in open water or in the pool, make sure you check out the My Swim Pro app available on iOS and Android. Subscribe to a plan. And if you're not already a member of the My Swim Pro global community, check it out. Linked in the description below on Facebook. It's amazing. Swimmers from all over the world. If you're looking for an open water swimming buddy, they might be living down the street and you don't even know it. They're probably in the My Swim Pro group. Check it out, all of that linked in the description below. As always, thanks so much for tuning in and happy swimming.